And now it's time for Mob Talk Radio with your host, Jeff Canarsi. Schools in, bitches. And welcome to Mob Talk Radio. I'm Jeff Canorsi, the guy who's going to fucking ruin Ralph Natale's day. And yeah, so this is not our regularly scheduled fucking show. Uh, This is something that sort of happened yesterday. Uh, I was minding my own fucking business. And uh, some people started sending me links to this fucking interview between Ralph Natale, that fucking dickhead, and Patrick Bet David, who the more he keeps interviewing people, especially rats, the more I just keep shaking my fucking head. Now, uh, I have said before that this is something that, that I was going to discontinue doing just because I, I there is no reason or purpose or rhyme for me to refute anything that Ralph Natale says because the guy's full of shit. George Anastasia, my arch enemy, said he was full of shit. Everybody has said that this guy is full of shit. But see, the problem is I could tell you all day that this guy is full of shit and the haters that I have will say, ah, he's making it up, he's making it up, whatever the fuck. So what I've done is I've gotten court transcripts, which are sitting in front of me, which I'm reading verbatim. And for anybody who wants to doubt the bullshit, I will post them and I will give you links to where I got them. And you can read what Ralph Natale fucking says. The guy can't keep his fucking story straight. Uh, he attacked, I don't know how many fucking people like Dracula in his fucking show spitting on the floor. I don't know how much fucking Patrick, but David had to pay him to like squeegee the fucking floor after that vile snake fucking spit everywhere. Uh, but the guy's a jerk off. The guy's a jerk off. He's a, he's a bitter old fucking prune. Uh, and they should leave him wherever they find him. It's amazing to me that anybody could, could pay this guy could pay this guy fucking money to sit there and <laughs> put your fucking teeth in, motherfucker. Nobody can hear a goddamn word you're saying. I had to fucking put on the goddamn, what do you call it, the caption so I can understand what the fuck he was saying. Fucking dunce, this guy. Fucking, fucking dunce. Que faccia di caso, that's what we say. So I'm going to get into a bunch of stuff, and some people are going to like this, some people are not going to like this. I might just fucking infuriate a lot of people, but I don't give a fuck because this is what I do. I call them out. And that's the thing. If you're going to sit there and you're going to say, this is the truth. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. But you're sitting there lying. And I got the transcripts that prove you're fucking lying. Either you're retarded and you can't write your own fucking bullshit book the right way. You said six different fucking versions of events. So let me get the events to the things you admitted to in court. Because you can't back off from that. What are you going to say? Oh, I, I had I fell on my head. This guy is the fucking Uncle Junior at a fucking mob. It's fucking ridiculous. So I'm going to spew a lot of different stuff today. I'm sure I'm going to probably say some things that are going to be a little off color, but that's just me. Uh, so basically, Patrick Bet David, uh, if you don't know who that guy is, apparently he went from like legitimately fucking interviewing like real people to becoming queen of the day with all these rats. Uh, that's all he's interviewing now is rats, 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 rats. Uh, none of them have any fucking validity in this world. Uh, but apparently, you know, I've said it before. I I just wish that this guy would ask tough questions. However, I I am quite fucking had a good time watching this shit show yesterday because of the look on Patrick Dip bet David's face. I don't think he realized who the fuck he dug out of the fucking ground. I couldn't stay on topic. Maybe, maybe he fucking takes some fucking Adderall, you fucking baldy-headed Dracula-looking motherfucker. So while Patrick Bet David was once a good interviewer, uh, I fear that he's really succumbed to only interviewing liars, cheats, uh, guys who were never big in the mafia as they claimed. Uh, the, the, the only one not subject to that was probably Sammy Gravano. I mean, he was a rat and a wire and a cheat too, but at least Sammy had some sort of fucking background in the mob. These other ones uh, inflated. Uh, But Bet David apparently, you know, doesn't do any research on these guys. I mean, otherwise he would know that he's being conned by cons. 
And it's hilarious because it's as simple as doing a Google search. It's as simple as reading court paperwork and transcripts. This guy doesn't even do that. Uh, and while I certainly understand the nature of interviewing guys with certain pasts, Bet David doesn't do the minimal research on any of anybody. It's like he types in the name Ralph Natali Mafia, and then he reports whatever he can find that's said uh, under that search link or whatever. I mean, I don't know what he's... I, <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what he's done repeatedly, because otherwise, he would know that the people he's having on his show are lying through their fucking teeth. And today, sir, yesterday's subject on his show didn't have any fucking teeth at all. Can we get a tooth count? <laughs> So while I can pick on Bet David for his lack of hard-nosed questions, the look on his face when Natalie was spewing Uncle Junior type of lines and dialogue had Bet David looking like he just witnessed the resurrection of Al Capone or a lack thereof. Natalie's full of shit in a million ways, all right? So for starters, in his book and, and on this stupid fucking interview, he claimed Angelo Bruno and Carlo Gambino cut their thumbs, mixed blood together, and he magically became a fucking pony or whatever the fuck it is he was saying. But basically, he's saying that he was made with Carlo and Angelo. Then he became the direct property of Carlo and Angelo. However, in court transcripts, he said that it was Joey Merlino who fucking officially inducted him into the mafia. He claims that he never, he never told Joey that he was a made guy already because he didn't want to hurt Joey's feelings. He didn't want him to know that the, the power he truly had. The power he truly had. It's embarrassing, to be honest with you, the amount of lies he's told. It really is. It's quite shocking. The story changes every time. But let's address his direct testimony in court after be, he became a fucking rat. Now, you got to hold on with me here because we're going to do some court transcripts and I'm going to fill in some gaps. All right, so for starters, Ralph Natale gets caught selling meth with our favorite guy, Ron Pravity. Uh, and and that, that's going to come after the fact, but uh, originally he gets violated on a parole violation, okay? And that's why he ends up in the can. So it's when he's in prison, he requested that his wife come to see him, blah, 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 blah. And it's then he offers his services to the FBI. Now, we'll get into the direct transcripts of the year, dates, and times, but I'm just sort of giving you a buffer. Uh, and this took place a week after he was locked up. Uh, he offered to wear a wire on the condition that the FBI lets him out of prison immediately so he could begin taping all his fucking enemies. His summation that he turned an informant because Joey Merlino, or the Merlino faction, refused to help his family out financially is a bullface fucking lie. Never happened. His claim that he waited a year before he ran to the feds is utterly the most hilarious shit I've ever seen. He didn't wait. He immediately offered his services. He couldn't pull his dick out fast enough for the FBI. I mean, he couldn't fucking wait. Uh, but we got to talk transcripts because that's, that's the most important thing here. Because this isn't me telling you. This is coming from direct court testimony. I, I cannot like fucking make up his own words for him. All right, so. We know he said that Carlo Gambino and Angelo Bruno secretly made him. However, under oath with the U.S. attorney at the time, Barry Gross, who was questioning him in the 2001 racketeering trial of Joey Merlino and his six co-defendants, posed some very interesting questions uh, regarding that situation. Uh, and, and the stuff that he ended up putting in his book is totally different than what he said under oath. Uh, and it's totally different than what he said in the interview today with Patrick Bet Star David or whatever the fuck this guy's name is. Uh, so this is directly taken from transcripts word for word. Barry Gross, when you came home from prison in September of 1994, were you a member of La Cosa Nostra when you came home? Ralph Natale. No, I was not. Sorry, I, I, sh I shouldn't even make fun of the guy without the teeth because then you might not understand what I'm saying. He says, no, I was not. Barry Gross, did you eventually become, did you eventually become a member Natalie, yes, I did. Barry Gross, and when did you become a member? Natalie, I was made an official member by Joseph Merlino. I took the position of boss. He was the underboss. So right there, he's telling a huge lie. He wasn't made by Bruno or anybody else. It was allegedly Joey Merlino that did it. So in his book, Natalie claims that, that, that the reason why, you know, uh, he did it was it was all for show and that he was simply humoring Merlino. Direct quote. 
I never told that punk that I was made by two of the biggest guys, but he wanted to show everybody what he had, Ralph Natale. None of them would have ever gone near Joey Merlino if he didn't have Ralphie. Uh, His assertion is that somehow Joey Merlino's name gave him standing in the mob. If it wasn't for Joey, you know, and not for Joey's name, uh, he would have never been nobody. Uh, and and if, it, if it wasn't for Ralph Natale's fucking character and background, Joey Merlino never would have been supported as the boss by the five families. Ugh. For starters, okay, his own testimony refutes what he's alleged. He was not made by Carlo Gambino, not made by Angelo Bruno. If that were the case... Uh, you know, listen, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have had to be Joey Merlino's errand boy because that's what he fucking was. Uh, he wouldn't have needed to be inducted into the Philly mob. You get made by Carlo Gambino. What the fuck you need the Philadelphia mafia for? I mean, it's a fucking joke. Carlo Gambino was one of the most powerful mob bosses to ever live. And you mean to tell me that Carlo made him and then he needed Joey to do everything for him? Common sense should tell you that that's total bullshit on behalf of Natale. Uh, Natale also claims in his book that he decided to cooperate in 1999, uh, which was over a parole violation, which we mentioned earlier. He claimed that Joey Merlino refused to take care of his family after promising to do so. While Natale was in prison for that violation, he then gets indicted on meth dealing with our favorite guy, Ron Previty, in that in June of that year. Uh, He was looking at a life sentence. The fact is, prior to his indictment, he had already offered his services to the FBI under the condition that they release him while he wore a wire. Uh, The feds were not down with that. He actually approached the feds in 1998, not 1999. So the idea that he waited a year er, fails on every fucking level. That's not true. Uh, Don't believe me? Well, let's look at the testimony because the testimony tells us pretty much exactly how this goes. And what I'm about to read you are court transcripts between Edwin Jacobs, who was the defense attorney at the time, on cross-examination with uh, toothy fucking Natale. Ed Jacobs. Isn't the truth, Mr. uh, Mr. Natale, that it was the summer of 1998 that you made your decision to become a cooperating witness and you approached the FBI with the idea that the idea and that they turned you down? Natale, no, no, that's not true, sir. Edwin Jacobs, and what he does is he refers to a parole hearing later in 1998 when the FBI went to bat for Natale as he sought release from jail. And this is a direct quote. And in your present presence, doesn't an FBI agent explain that in 1998 they were not, for a variety of reasons, willing to accept you as a cooperation witness? Natale, uh, can I explain this, sir? Edwin Jacobs, no, you could just answer my question. Natale, I spoke to Jim Marr, agent heading the investigation into the Natale Merlino organization, about maybe doing something as a a cooperating witness. I didn't make no decision yet. I wanted to speak to him because uh, when I was incarcerated, I looked at myself again, and I said, here it goes again. For what? My dear friends took all my money. They didn't give my wife a dime, and I'm sitting here. I said, could this be happening to me again? Edwin Jacobs. So the truth here is in the summer of 1998, you went to the FBI for the sole purpose of discussing becoming a witness for them. Isn't that the truth? Natalie? Yes. Yes, it is. So he starts lying on one end and then totally tells the truth on the other. So he's admitting that in 1998, he started ratting, which means within two weeks of getting in under the parole violation, he starts yapping and telling the feds he wants to rat. So the idea, the very fucking idea that his whole entire statement about why he becomes an informant because Joey Merlino wouldn't pay his family is all bullshit. The minute that he got into the can, he started ratting because he didn't want to do fucking time. And the FBI wanted nothing to do with him because they knew he was a lying rat sack of shit. Now, eventually the feds would use him, but it didn't work. And we'll get to that. But that's my point. He's not telling the truth. And I don't know how he deviates and goes from the book saying one thing uh, to the interview saying the next thing, he cannot keep the story straight, but this is this is court testimony. You can't, this is, this is shit you can't back out of. You can't fucking erase. So Natalia would go on to explain that he couldn't work out a deal with the feds. So what he's going to try to do here is basically say that him and the feds were negotiating, but they couldn't reach a deal, but that's not true either. So Natalia tries to explain in court that he couldn't work out a deal with the feds. However, it was the feds who said, go fuck yourself to Natale. And there's a written record of it 
which included Jim Marr, the supervisory agent of the FBI that was heading the investigation. So once again, Natalie lying his ass off. Don't believe me? Here's more testimony directly related to this particular subject. Edwin Jacobs. Mr. Mata- Mr. Natalie, I'm going to take the liberty of reading these eight lines to the jury. This is a direct quote. Yes, it was. I was prior to that. The uh, We talked about his cooperating, the things he could do, and so forth. We weren't able to really get into a position where we could make any kind of cooperation. It was just impossible to do for a variety of reasons, and I guess we finally decided that, and I think it was our decision, that Mr. Man- that our, it was our decision, not Mr. Natale's, uh, that we could not put together a cooperation agreement at that time. So he's lying once again. That's directly from the fucking Jim Marr, the FBI supervisor agent. That they're the ones that said they couldn't deal with Natalie because he was lying and other shit like this. But if you listen to Ralph, Ralphie, don't shoot your eye out, you prick. You listen to good old Ralphie. He tells it a very different way and he's not even telling the fucking truth. He's not even telling the truth about that. So he doesn't cooperate because Joey or or the ghost of Christmas past ain't giving him a fucking envelope every week. He does it because he doesn't want to do he doesn't want to do jail time. And he doesn't wait a year to see, well, maybe this month they'll give me something. Maybe some next month they'll give me something. No. He fucking immediately, within a week, starts running his fucking toothless yap and willing to give up everybody and their fucking mother. That's why if there was a deal for Natalia to get cash, anything at all, that would go south in 1998, especially when the Philly mob finds out that Ralphie Teeth is talking. The fact is the jury didn't believe a word Natalie said on the stand. And the jury said that Natalie was not credible, which is exactly why a lot of the major crimes like the murder charges and everything got were laughed at and thrown out of court. Yeah, they were convicted of some other stuff. But the big tough, nasty stuff that puts you in prison for a long time didn't stick because Natalie was incredible on any fucking level. Natalie has just spun a lot of fucking stories his whole entire life. He didn't know Jimmy Hoffa. He didn't know Frankie Carbo. He didn't know Carlo Gambino. He didn't know Sonny Liston. He never met Frank Sheeran. He never sat down with Jimmy Hoffa on any business. He never sat down with Angelo Bruno over Hoffa. It's all lies and nonsense. Use common sense. If you don't want to believe me, just use common sense. Because that's what we talk about on this show. With a guy with so much power, who's made by Carlo Gambino. What the fuck does he need Joey Merlino for? Why would he need to get made twice? (laughs) Has he got an ego problem? It's like getting stroked twice. You need to get stroked twice, Ralphie. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Street sense doesn't make any sense on any level. I could put sixth graders in fucking chairs in a classroom and ask them these questions and they'll get it. (laughs) And, you know, Ralph tries to to, to portray himself as this fucking tough guy, this fucking serious guy, you know, who stands up for morals and all this bullshit, right? But did you know he tried to basically pimp out his fucking daughter? But you didn't know that. Of course, he was caught. He was caught on wiretaps, and he was essentially trying to pimp out his own daughter. In a recorded call, basically the crux of the call was that there was a guy who was interested in Natalie's daughter, and Natalie's daughter, who was actually married at the time, and I believe she was working at a doctor's office. Um, Natalie was trying to get some kind of construction contracts with this guy, and basically explained to his daughter that you know, well, maybe you can sleep with the guy. You know, I'm not saying you have to, but if you want to, you can. So he's willing to put his daughter's marriage, he's willing to put his daughter out there like a pimp so he can get a deal with, with get some construction contracts. Who does that? So he wants to sit there, spit on the floor like a fucking tough guy and say all this crazy lunacy shit. But meanwhile, the, 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 the daughter he has, he's trying to pimp her out. So that's what I'm trying to say to you is that you, you're sitting there for people that are watching this fucking asshole who looks like a fucking hard boiled fucking egg. You're watching him and he wants you to believe he's fucking like uh, he wants you to believe like he's the incarnation of Nicky Scarfo, John Gotti, Carl Gambino and all these other fucking people. But the reality is he isn't. He isn't. And anybody any, name me one other fucking mob guy. Who's ever pimped out his fucking daughter to try to get an edge on a construction deal 
Who does that? Uh, so another interesting facet of his toothless rant on Bet David's show was how he would have scaled the fence that Nikki Scarfo had erected around his house because he was afraid of Ralph Natale. And if he wanted to, he would climb over that fence and kill Nikki Scarfo. And that's pretty fucking hilarious because everybody I've talked to that knew Ralph very well, who have nothing to gain, told me verbatim. He was petrified of Nikki Scarfo. He shook in Nikki Scarfo's presence. And Nikki Scarfo never built a wall around his fucking house. You ever been to South Philly? He's going to build a nine-foot brick wall. You know how fucking ridiculous that, li- that, 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 that sounds? If this was fucking Afghanistan, I might get it. Not in South Philly, you're not going to do that. Oh, yeah, talk about not drawing attention. Eh, never mind. Put up a nine-foot fucking cinder block fence. They can't get through the wall. How stupid does that sound? Frank Sinatra. He never met no Frank Sinatra. He never drove Frank Sinatra. He, if he, listen, I'm going to tell you something about Frank Sinatra. He had a nasty disposition. I think everybody fucking knows that. But let me explain something about Frank Sinatra. He had a lot of friends. And nobody was going to mouth off at Frank Sinatra. And let me tell you why. First of all, Natalie's claim that he talked tough to Sinatra. Yeah, okay, I don't buy that for a second. The reality is Sinatra was tight with the Fischetti brothers. And believe me, had Natalie gotten out of line with Sinatra, take your pick of wise guys who would have chopped off Natalie's fucking head just on principle. Skinny D'Amato, Sam Giancana, the Fischettis, Carlo Gambino. Take your fucking pick. Funzi Tierra. Thierry, take your fucking pick of gangsters. Frank would have just dialed the fucking digits and, and fucking Natalie would have been handled immediately. If he was so close to Angelo Bruno all them years, how come you never see him with Angelo Bruno? How come it's John Stanford driving him? And not fucking, you know, lizard face. If he had talked shit to Sinatra the way he tries to portray it, they would have eaten Natalie's eyes for fucking lunch. And I'm not saying Sinatra was a physically tough guy because he wasn't. I think that on the record, everybody knows Sinatra wasn't a tough guy with his fists. But you think he wouldn't have called somebody? This is a guy that was dropping money off to Lucky Luciano, for Christ's sakes, in Italy. The guy had at least enough clout that if he had a problem, he could have it taken care of. Tommy Dorsey got a gun put in his fucking mouth. Let Frank out of the contract or your brains are going to be all over this fucking thing. And so this is something that just everything he says is bullshit. And I can't stand a guy who fucking lies. And at least like this. And so this part of what I'm about to say may get me in trouble. But I'm going to say fuck it and say what I got to say. And if, if people get upset with me, they can take it up with me as they always do. So he talks shit about a lot of people. He hates, he hates everybody. I, the guy didn't fucking acknowledge one guy. He acknowledges people. He, ne- he acknowledges liking people that I don't think he ever knew. That's the weird thing. And everybody that he acknowledged he likes is fucking dead. So nobody can acknowledge, you know, his version of events. I love it when these rats do this shit. Oh, I was with this one and that one and I shot with this one. Okay, well, let's call up this one and ask them. You can't. Because they're fucking dead. I'll give you another example. There's somebody that likes to tell a big story about Rob and Tommy Patera. Guess what? I talked to Tommy. Tommy never heard of the guy in his life. Tommy tells me. No bullshit. Tells me, tell me more stories about this jerk off. I need some laughs in prison. People make shit up. Believe me, Tommy Patera was out on the streets. I don't think this guy be saying a whole lot. It's easy to talk shit about a guy when he's sitting in the can for the rest of his life. Because you're not going to face no repercussions for what you say. But Ralph talked about some specific people. And I kind of got a problem with it. Not because of anything that he said was fucking true. But because he's trying to distort the truth. So he hates Stevie Mazzone, okay? Uh, He calls George Borghese a hacky. What the fuck is a hacky? I mean, did he mean lackey, hacky, hacky sacky? Uh, is, is, Is it a lack of teeth that makes him almost inaudible? You gotta ask yourself, if it feels a certain way about any of these guys, and he was a boss, why didn't he just kill him? 
you know, considering that he tells everybody he's killed more people to cancer. <laughs> Fucking jerk off. The whole point is he didn't because he feared them. If he's the boss and he doesn't like these guys, why didn't he just kill them? He didn't because he feared them. And because he was never a fucking boss. And like I said, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I don't give a fuck. Stevie Mazzone is a hardworking family guy. Everyone adores that guy. And he's not what people say he is. And he's certainly not the guy that Ralph Natale tries to fucking insinuate that he is. The government can allege whatever the fuck they want about whoever they want, but none of it's fucking true. George, he's another one. George is a family guy. He's a good guy. He's an honest guy. Somebody who minds his own business and doesn't fuck with nobody. But for some reason, Natalie, it's like he's envious or he's jealous of them for some fucking weird kind of stalker kind of reason. How can anyone, and I'm asking a legit question here, how can anyone control the alleged boss that allegedly being Joey Merlino, how can anybody control his thoughts, his actions? They can't. He's a man's man, just like Stevie Mazzone and just like George Borghese. And I don't mean that in a mafia sense. I mean that as a man's sense. You will not find three more respectful, honest, and loyal men than Joey, Georgie, and Stevie. That's a fucking fact. And all this nonsense that Natalia is spewing is nothing short of a jealous rage uh, because he's not a man. He's a dog and a punk and a rat. Those three guys, those three guys, <coughs> excuse me, those three guys got more respect, honor, and loyalty on a cum-filled fucking napkin than Natalie could ever hope to have in his entire fucking bald-headed life. So who's the boss? First of all, if we believe what Natalie says when he admits that Joey Merlino made him, let me ask you a very fucking rhetorical question. Let's pretend... If Joey had to induct him into the mafia, why the fuck and how the fuck does a guy go from an associate to a made guy and a boss all in one fucking day? <laughs> if that's the case and that's accurate, sign me the fuck up. Sign me up tomorrow. Make me. I'll, be, you know, I'll go from an associate on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, you'll make me. By Wednesday, I'm the boss of my own crime family. Explain to me how that fucking works. Does that make any fucking sense to you? Someone, please fucking explain that to me. I want to know what crime family to get into that way. If all I got to do, like I said, is get made and take over a family the next day, where the fuck do I sign up? How come Gotti just didn't do that? How come Nino Gaggi didn't do it? How come fucking Carlo Gambino didn't do that? Are you fucking kidding me? You know what I think? I, I don't think Ralph was ever a boss. And then this is just me. I... I <laughs> It's ridiculous. He was put front and center to take the heat as a front boss type of situation. But then again, I don't even know how accurate that is because he's a fucking nut. He is fucking delusional on every fucking level. I have no idea where the tooth, tooth decay begins and ends with this fucking guy. He reminds me of another rat who reads mafia books and inserts himself into every fucking historical event in the history of the mafia. Natalie was a drug dealer, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, he killed people? Sure, of course. Nobody's, nobody's fucking disputing that. But if he thought you would believe that he blew Hitler, saving the world because of it, he would say so. And I'll say it again. If he thought he could talk you into believing that he gave Hitler a blowjob and he saved the entire world, that's what he would tell you. Besides, <laughs> the whole prostitute gumming someone's dick look he's got going on might work wonders for him, believe it or not. Fucking jerk off. They can stroke his Telly Savalas telling him he's the boss, just like Janice Soprano did with Ralph Cifaretto while she was cramming a dildo in his ass. Is, is that what you need, Ralphie? You need to be groomed a little bit. You need to be petted, told you're the boss. You're the boss, Ralphie. You're the boss. You're the boss. Then he goes on. And I could do this all day. Then he makes this completely hysterical claim that if Joey Molino was sitting right here, I'd beat his ass. 
I'd beat his ass. Hey, listen, not to bust balls. Because <laughs> I'm going to bust some balls just to have a little fun. Joey, if, uh, if you're listening in, do yourself a favor, my friend. Stay inside. You do not want the ghost ghosts of persona non grata's past whipping your ass on the lawn slinging his teeth in a sock at you while he struggles to breathe you don't need that joey that's a bad look be careful be a, be scared joe be real scared fuck out of here he looks like a fucking he looks the he, he fucking uh, 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 ralph natalie looks like the fucking crypt keepers fucking douche that's what he looks like and i could sit here and go on all fucking day talking about this fucking jerk off and I'm not going to do it and I've got more court transcripts that are going to come in days and I'm going to do it on another format than this and I know what you people are going to say oh there he is he wouldn't say that to Ralph yes I would what's he going to do gum me he's going to fucking art he looks like fucking Nosferatu holy shit that just fucking dawned on me he looks like fucking Nosferatu I thought Giuliani looked like Nosferatu a little bit more, but uh, Jesus Christ, I think Natalie's got the whole Nosferatu thing down. The point is, stop giving a platform to these guys. He wants to talk shit about people he barely fucking knows, makes up fucking wild stories. Did he teach Liberace how to play the fucking piano too? He sit on his lap and go, come on, Lee, play them fucking tunes, baby. I mean, that's how ridiculous it is. Like a friend of mine said last night to me, oh, it's like he found the fucking tomb of the unknown soldier. You know? He just makes shit up. And then when you refute him on it, he goes like fucking psychotic, which is actually kind of funny to witness. You know, Patrick Be- Bet David should have done everybody a favor and just lean forward and go, hey, Ralphie, hey, Ralphie, open, 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 and put a pacifier in his fucking mouth. And you don't have to believe anything that I say. And you can say that, you know, I fucking uh, am biased towards him because I I like this guy or that guy. I would do this for anybody. It doesn't matter if it's Joey or fucking the Pope or whoever the fuck. I defend my friends. That's what I fucking do. And the problem is these people are going to go and they're going to watch this shit. And they're going to fall in love with this fucking nut job who's not telling the truth. Who's completely fucking... I, fucking nuts. I, I, there's no other way to say it. And then he talks about people he barely fucking knows and calls them hacky, lacky, smacky, and dacky and whatever fucking stupid nonsensical word he can come up with <coughs> because he's got nothing. Okay, if, if you're going to tell me a guy's a bad guy, give me four reasons why. Instead, he wants to pick out a bullshit physical attribute of somebody that ain't even fucking true. And he's the last person that should be talking about physical appearances. Jesus fucking Christ. Fucking Grandpa Munster was more bangable than that prick. <laughs> so do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Don't just laugh at it because that's what it is. It's, it's laughter. It's entertainment. I just don't get it. I don't understand how the fuck this coronavirus all of a sudden brought all these shitheads out of the fucking woodwork. They're like fucking termites. They should be at home banging each other, doing whatever it is that little, have their little rat club meetings, you know, where one of them pretends to be boss for some KY jelly and a fucking nine volt battery. And it's just disgusting. And I've said this all the time. I said this to an, to an attorney yesterday who called me from Philly, just shooting the shit with me. And he asked me, he goes, have you ever seen this in your life? I said, no. It's like they all got together and took a vote of which, which rat was going to go first. It's sort of like the cracker game. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to be a little disgusting. So if you don't want to hear this, you want to think I'm fucked up for saying it, I'm going to say it. The cracker game is the rats all stand in a fucking circle. They all start jerking off. And the last one to jerk off on the cracker, guess what they got to do? They got to fucking eat it. And a few of them probably don't mind being the last one. I got to tell you, I could give you three that I think would just love being the last one. Fuck them. Fuck everything they say. And just remind yourself of one thing. If you're a mob genre fan, you're entitled to have your fucking opinions. But these are not real fucking men. You want to look up to Carlo Gambino? Fine. You want to look up to Joe Bonanno? All right, whatever. You want to look up to fucking Ray Patriarca? Okay. You want to look up to Joey Merlino? Okay, fine. I got no problem with that. 
don't look up to these guys that when the fucking hammer and the gavel come down, the first thing they do is run to tell on everybody. That's not a fucking man. That's not a fucking man. And the more that you give these guys a reason to keep talking, the more they're going to talk. None of them. Not a single one of them. And I could go down a list of ten that couldn't tell you the truth if their life depended on it. They'd all rob their mothers and rape their mothers if they could get away with it. Because their brains ain't right. They're scum of the fucking earth. All right, so all that being said, I'm done with it. I'm one and done. And if anybody's got a problem with what the fuck I just said, you know where to reach me. And that's not designed to, to, to say to one guy or another. That's just in general. I got an opinion. I'm going to share my fucking opinion. You don't have to like my opinion, but guess what? It's my fucking opinion. And if you have an opinion you want to share, don't be a little bitch. Don't be a bitch. Get your own fucking talk show. Get your own fucking podcast. Everybody wants to run their mouth, blah, 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 blah. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. And that's all I got to say about that. So we will be back later on this week with an all-new show. Uh, Just stay tuned to the Facebook page, Mob Talk Radio, for updates on that kind of stuff. Uh, I excuse the, the vernacular that I use today. I'm just sick of these rats. I'm sick of people talking shit about people they don't know. And, and I'm, I'm going to defend my friends. And if that makes me wrong and that makes me hated, then so be it. Uh, I would rather fucking be hated by everybody and have the respect of five or six people uh, than to kiss anybody's ass. So all that being said, fuck Ralph Natalie. Thank <laughs> you.